In this video, we'll be talking about what I think is one of the most interesting techniques most people don't learn in the course of a normal mathematics education. The technique is called circle inversion. In this first part of our series on circle inversion, we'll talk about what circle inversion is, some properties of this transformation, and how to use circle inversion to solve some interesting problems involving geometrical objects such as circles and lines. But first, let's talk about transformations. A transformation is something that we do to a mathematical object or problem to make it easier to solve. Most people are familiar with linear transformations like dilation, otherwise known as zooming in and out, or perhaps you've seen reflection, like this reflection about the y-axis. Another common transformation is rotation about a point, like this rotation about the origin. Circle inversion, however, is a non-linear transformation. It looks a little bit like this. We have a green reference circle and we're performing an inversion of the plane. Notice how the inside gets mapped to the outside, and vice versa. It's a little bit easier to see in polar coordinates. Look at how the circles inside the green circle are being mapped to the outside, and vice versa. Here are some shapes for reference. You'll notice that all of the shapes are being distorted under this transformation, except for the circle, which only changes size. This is one of the really nice properties of circle inversion, that circles stay circles. In reverse, notice that points close to the center get mapped very far away, whereas points near the green circle stay near the green circle. Let's look at how to invert a point with respect to this green circle, the center of which we'll call O. The point we're interested in we'll call A. Draw a line through O and A and then construct a perpendicular from A up to the circle. The tangent at this point will intersect the ray at some point, which we'll call A dash. This is the inverted version of the point A. The two triangles we've drawn are similar, which means the ratio of their two sides is equal. This gives us the formula for circle of inversion. OA, which is this distance here, multiplied by OA dash, which is this distance here, is equal to R squared, the radius of the circle of inversion squared. And this is the formula that we will use when we solve problems using circle inversion. As we mentioned before, it's an interesting fact that a circle under inversion becomes another circle. Let's look at inverting the same circle, but now a little closer to the origin. Points close to the origin get much further away under inversion. Now, let's see some examples. In the generic case we just saw, a small blue circle gets inverted to a larger red circle outside the circle of inversion. Circle inversion is what's called a conformal map, so angles are preserved, specifically Anything tangent in the original problem will still be tangent in the inverted space. What about when the circle goes through the origin of the inversion circle? We've seen previously that as points get closer to the center of the circle, these inverted points get further and further away. In fact, if a circle goes through the origin of the circle of inversion, that point goes to infinity under the inversion. So, in the special case of a circle going through the origin, we actually get a straight line in the inverted space. This is actually very useful when it comes to solving problems using circle inversion, as we are able to transform circles, which are complicated shapes, into straight lines, which are much easier to deal with. As a special case of this, if a circle goes through the origin and is tangent to the green line, its inversion is a straight line that is also tangent to the circle at that point. For completion, here's a circle that goes through the origin and the circle of inversion. 
Note that on the circle of inversion, the points have to stay where they are. And here's a circle outside the green circle, getting inverted to the red circle inside of it. Now, let's look at a typical problem we can solve using this technique. Here we have a unit circle with several other circles inside of it. Our job is to find the radius r of the smallest circle. Have a think about how you would do this and pause the video and try it out. One way is to construct the blue triangles as shown here. And use Pythagoras to construct two simultaneous equations. You should find that the two triangles are congruent and therefore the radius is half that of the medium circle, meaning r is a quarter. Let's now show this using inversion. One choice you have to make is what circle you want to invert on. You should look for points of mutual tangency and use those as your center of your circle of inversion. So here we can use the big circle as the circle of inversion and color it green. The diameter, which we'll color in blue, inverts to another straight line that extends outwards towards infinity, just like this. The medium circle goes through the origin of the inversion circle, and it's also tangent to the green circle, so it inverts to a straight line that's also tangent to the green circle. And our small circle is tangent to all three, so it must be tangent to all three in the inverted space. Now, let's draw a straight line through the origin, the center of our circle, and its inverted version. Let's label some points. The point A inverts to A dash. We're going to use these two points, the radius of our smallest circle is. Remember, we use the formula for the circle of inversion. OA times OA dash is equal to R squared. Noting that the radius of the green circle is 1. The distance to A dash is simply the radius R of the green circle plus the diameter D of the red circle. Both of these are equal to 1. So we get the equation OA times 1 plus 1 equals 1. Or OA is equal to a half. The diameter of the small circle is 1 minus OA and the radius is half that distance. So R is equal to a quarter. In the next video in this series, we will reveal some of the more advanced properties of circle inversion by using it to solve some more advanced problems. I hope you can have fun using this technique to solve some problems that you find. Until next time, thanks for watching.